All right, Chris Clark here from GamecockCentral.com. I'm joined by another special guest tonight, Trey Knox, Gamecock football tied in in this interview presented to you by the folks over at Garnet Trust. Be sure to visit GarnetTrust.com to learn more about them and what they do. Trey, appreciate you joining me, man. I know it's uh, busy as you guys are in the midst of workout, getting ready for spring ball to start up uh, next month here in a couple weeks. So how are things going for you? Man, just first and foremost, I just appreciate you having me on the show, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, I mean, it's going great, man. We're getting bigger, stronger, faster, all these things, man. Um, <laughs> just excited to go step back out on the field. It's been a while. Um, and excited to see what we have on our, as an offense, you know, excited to see the plays, the players. Um, just very excited, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited to do this interview and, and learn a little bit from you because I, I don't think we've talked to you. Uh, since you transferred from Arkansas to South Carolina, there's a lot. There's a lot to dive into. I know. I remember covering you as a recruit a little bit. Um, I think South Carolina had offered you out of high school, out of Tennessee. Um, not sure they had a lot of traction at that time, but Justin Step was able to get you over to Arkansas. Uh, but man, I remember covering you as a as a wide receiver, obviously out of Tennessee, seeing you at some of the camps and everything. But um. First of all, tell us about this journey that you've been on. You know, you spent time at Arkansas, receiver, then you moved to tight end, then you end up transferring. So just kind of walk us through your career path so far. Oh, well, um, man, it was – it's been a long time. I've been playing college football. For, this is going on my fifth year now, uh, using yeah. my COVID year. Um, but I signed in the class of 2019, uh, played receiver, started as a true freshman, had a pretty decent year as a – as a true freshman receiver, um, COVID comes around, you know, everybody's season was not the greatest. I didn't have a very good sophomore campaign. Um, and then 2021, the season comes around battling and out with guys. Uh, thought I was playing for some pretty good football, man, but, uh, you know, just some things didn't go my way. And so I found myself in the tight end room and instantly fell in love with it, fell in love with Coach Loggins the way that he coaches, uh, just the way that he cares about his players, man. And and started playing in the game some 2021 towards the end of the season. Actually was the starter towards the end of the season. And I just thought to myself, like, man, I could be really good at playing tight end because, uh, you know, I'm physical. I'll stick my nose in there and I'll block. And also just the receiving ability on top of that would just help me a lot. So last season, 2022, I did. My first year playing full tight end, fully tight end, uh, started every game, uh, had an okay year. I mean, maybe not okay to some other people, but okay for myself as, as I look back and reflect. And I just know that I can do more and that I'm better than what I've showed on tape. And I just came here looking for the opportunity to showcase my talent. Yeah, so a lot of interesting things there, even in what you said to unpack. So you mentioned loving – almost immediately, right, playing tight end. And I, I thought that was interesting because you see guys move positions for different reasons, but honestly, some receivers don't want to block and do those things that you got to do as a tight end. But you had a pretty big checklist of things to transition to, right? You have to gain weight. You probably got to get more adept at blocking. Like, what was that transition like? And, and why did you fall in love with it so much? Uh, I don't know. It's a hard question. I think it's just – the fact that you can try to, you know, out physical another human being, man, and just, you know, put your hands on them and move them out the way. Um, and a lot of guys don't want to do the dirty work. And I think that's another reason why I like it, because, I mean, tight end's not for everybody. You can have the body, but you you have to have the technique and the willingness to play tight end. Because, I mean, it's not you don't get as much shine as the receivers or the quarterback, but you're still a skill player. Um, and so I think that's why I like, I liked it so much. And I fell in love with it. It's just, you know, something that's physical and you have to be smart to play tight end, man. You got to know pass game and run game. So, and I think I'm a very cerebral guy and just, it came, came easy learning the offense and, you know, learning both the run game. And it was very interesting to me, um, you know, mm -hmm. diving deep into football, um, you know, deeper than my understanding when I was playing receiver yeah. and, I mean, it was a hard transition. It wasn't easy. I mean, gaining the weight was the hardest part. Um, just like stuffing my face with food and 
drinking chocolate milks. And I mean, uh, our nutritionist did a good job, you know, helping me through that process. And I mean, it wasn't easy. Most days I didn't feel like eating, but I know that I had to, to be able to, you know, produce and help the team. And then just learn how to block. Well, I, my willingness was already in my head. So that was half the battle was mm -hmm. being willing to block. Cause you know, some guys don't want to block at all. And, you know, blocking is all the same. It's just all about the feet. And that's where I had to learn really fast is playing in, in line with those big old guys on the O-line. It's way different than blocking on the perimeter. Um, there's, all about your first your first two steps, honestly. And if you can get really good at your first two steps, you will be a pretty good blocker, man. Just, you know, getting it up and getting it down fast and not taking a big step and not getting out leveraged and uh just and hat placement, getting your hat on the right side of the shoulder pads and and not getting out leveraged. Just and it it fascinated me because you know, I love football and I mean I could see myself coaching one day. So just learning like different aspects of the game that I really you know, learning O-line play. I mean, a guy like me really didn't worry about O-line play because I was just worried about, hey, you just stay up long enough to throw me the ball. Um, <laughs> right. Now I'm in some of the protections and, you know, so learning about that just helped me. It just opened my eye to the game. Yeah. Well, you always had, even out of high school, like you weren't obviously 250 pounds because you were a receiver, but you had a frame, fortunately, that where you could put on weight, but like how much weight did you have to gain and then you mentioned a lot of chocolate milk. You know, you hear the the old stories about the guys like eating peanut butter, like straight out of the jar. Like how much weight did you have to put on and how did you get there? Well, the end of the end of the 2021 season, I was 200 and like 17 pounds trying to wow. play tight end. So, right. I mean, I mean, I think I ended the season like 221, like still small. And well, it's so, hard to put on weight in season, right? It's very I mean, hard. Yeah. It's already it's hard enough to eat as it is yeah. during the season because you're just so tired and you don't feel like eating. But just putting on, so I basically put on a little over 20 pounds. And I mean, it wasn't all good weight because I put it on so fast. But that's <laughs> right. why this this extra year of playing college football would really help me, you know, getting my body back into shape. Because when I played receiver, I was my freshman year, I was 205 pounds, like, and I was four percent body fat. Like, I don't look like that anymore. Yeah, like I was shredded. <laughs> and I, I'm just not that guy anymore. Like, And so I have to, you know, work my body. Of course, playing tight end, you want to have some more body fat than you would playing receiver because you need more cushion because you know you're banging every play. <laughs> but it was it was hard, man, just having to eat and then snacking. That was the hardest part. Like eating the three meals is cool, but <laughs> you have to get extra calories in between every meal. So you're eating six, seven times a day. And your mm -hmm. stomach tells you you need to stop. I might be sick, but you can't. And <laughs> so that's like the hardest commitment about gaining weight. Yeah. But I mean, I used to drink a chocolate milk every night before I went to sleep. The uh, uh, the grape and peanut butter jelly uh, uh, uncrustables. Mm -hmm. I got like I, I I don't like them anymore because I used to eat them so much. <laughs> I can't look at one of them. I want to just smack it out of somebody's hand. But I ate. That yeah. and chocolate milk really did it for me. And, then, you know, protein shakes, of course. But it wasn't any, like, supplementing meals. Like, you had to eat. There was no getting by about, yeah, if I drink protein shake here, I don't have to eat. Like, no. So it was, it was, all it was hard, yeah. but it worked. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's probably been somebody else in the history of college football that's done this, but probably not many, like – so you have you're in such a unique position, I feel like, because you've got started out as a receiver, mm -hmm. the guy who recruited you and coached you there for a while moves to another school. Then you move positions, get coached by a different guy. He also moves to that same school that that other guy is now at, becomes the offensive coordinator, and then you move to go play for that guy as the OC. Um, pretty unique deal. I mean, right? How that kind of turned out for you. Very unique, man. And, you know, it's just all about people, man. You know, I love Coach Step. I love Coach Loggins. And they just care about people and they uplift uh, their guys and, you, you know, make you want to play for them, man. Uh, so when I seen that he was leaving, it, it was no doubt or no brainer to me not to mm -hmm. follow. Yeah. What was it about Loggins that you like so much? Well, he's just so down to earth, man. Like, 
and it's all it's not all about football for him um mm-hmm. he wants to teach life lessons also and make you a better man you know you don't see that a lot of the time you know playing college football just mm-hmm. football 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 and not enough about life mm-hmm. and i think that's what he does a great job and the, the way he coaches i don't think he's ever screamed at me he's just very laid back and that just you know shows coming from the nfl because that was his first thing that he told me he's like in in the nfl you can't you know, yell at those guys like that because they make more money than I do. <laughs> so uh, he, right. took the, he took the same philosophy, you know, playing or coaching college football, man, just easy going. But when it's time to work, you know, it's time to work. Um, and mm-hmm. he, he, it's a very fine line between work and play, but you know, when it's, when it's time to be serious and it's time to work. What impressions have you gotten from, you know, when you played for him at Arkansas, he wasn't, you know, the play callers. Now he's going to be running the offense at South Carolina. What sense have you gotten, whether it's for him, from him or just what you guys have been looking at, looking through so far about your role in the offense, how you're going to be used, and, and just what the offense is going to look like overall? Don't don't have to give away any secrets, but just yeah, yeah. how are you going to be utilized? Well, I think, uh, you know, every great offense also has a good tight end. I think those two go hand in hand. If you look at the Chiefs, I mean – Travis Kelsey gets the ball so much. Yeah, he does. And, he does. Uh, and their offense is very high powered. But uh, so we're just going to try to do some of those things, you know, spread the tight end out and, you know, get them the ball because that opens, you know, everything else up. When you are able to gash the middle and work the middle, I mean, you wreak havoc on a, a lot of defenses. So uh, definitely I'm going to be a big part of the offense. But, you know, we're going to, you know, spread the ball around, let everybody eat because we have so many playmakers on this offense. I mean, mm-hmm. it's unreal the depth that we have, and I think we'll be very good on offense. What have been your early impressions of some of the guys you are going to be playing with? Um, obviously, you know, the tight end room from last year cleared out, but you guys have yeah. yourself and some others that are going to play key roles, uh, you know, receivers like Juice Wells. Um, all those guys. And then Spencer Rattler. I mean, what have been some of your impressions early on of your teammates? I know you haven't gotten into spring ball yet, but. Yeah. I mean, they're very talented guys, man. Uh, I'm just happy to be here to be able to play with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, they're all good guys. We laugh and joke and have fun (laughs) just like everybody else. But I think that they know when to turn it on and off, and some guys don't. Uh, And when it's time to work, them boys are ready to work. And Spencer is just, uh, he's one of the, he's very smart. And his arm is very, very strong. <laughs> and <laughs> right. so he, he can sling it. And so um, I'm just ha- excited to play with him because I know that he's smart and he is very talented. And I know that we're, you know, going through the same thing. Like, uh, you know, hadn't had the, the best start of his career, uh, you know, left a place. Um, thinking about going into the draft last season, didn't this is the last year. Like, so we have a lot of similarities, what we're going through right now. And I think that's what is like bringing us together and making us close. But I mean, he's a cool dude, man. He talks and he talks. I mean, you think a big guy, like a guy that's is, you know, a status of Spencer Rattler would be a recluse and, you know, not talk to any of his guys, but I mean, he's in the training room, cutting it up, laughing, you know, joking, just like everybody else, just like he's, you know, a normal guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can appreciate stuff like that because fame gets to a lot of people's heads and he is, you know, decided that he's not going to let it happen. He's going to be a good guy, uh, be a great teammate. And I think that's the best thing about him is he he, he communicates well and he leads. Uh, he's a he's a good leader. It's pretty obvious that you're a, a, a thoughtful guy like you and you were talking about going into how you just like getting into like the details, the nitty gritty of football. So one individual around the program I wanted to ask you about is Luke Day, strength coach. So you guys have been able to obviously spend a lot of time around him. He, I feel like, is not your typical strength coach with kind of how he operates. So get, give me your thoughts and impressions on him. Um, <laughs> Very different. Nothing that I've ever <laughs> done before. And that first week when we went in there, I was like, I don't know what this is. Or that, hey, I was lost in the sauce. <laughs> And I know uh, I just know that nobody's working like this around the country because I've been to another spot and I've seen how how those workouts go and what they do. And here is just nothing like it, man. Um, Between lifting and the running and the toughness stuff that we do, it's just it's just very different. And, you know, after that first week, I got adjusted and, you know, started killing the workouts and stuff. But it's very different. And it's hard. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and it tests it tests your your strength and your mental toughness. And I mean, I respect it a bunch because it makes us a better team. Yeah. When you were um, going through this process, I mean, I know you kind of said pretty early on you felt like you were going to be ticketed to go to South Carolina, but talking to Coach Beamer and kind of becoming comfortable with him throughout the process, what were y'all's conversations like in terms of, you know, what you were looking for and what he was looking for and um, the impact that he was looking for you to have? Um, well, we uh... – we talked and uh, he's very down to earth, man. Uh, great, great guy, great man. Uh, and I mean, hip and cool. And, you know, he cares about his players. And that was one thing that I was really, wor- you know, big on is like, does he really care? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I have one year and I don't want to squander it and I don't want to waste it. And okay. so I wanted to go somewhere where the coach cares and the string coach cares. And they showed that. And Coach Beamer said, I can make a big impact. I mean, all the tight ends left. So (laughs) it wasn't really like much talking about like, I mean, the room was wide open. So I was like, all right, well, I mean, that sounds good. Sounds like playing time for me. (laughs) So uh, I was very excited about that. But the the way that he runs this program is just, it's just top notch. It's nothing like I've seen before. And I'm very excited. Very excited. All right, let's let's hit before we do one more football question and let you go. Couple, couple or a few off the field items. So, yeah. you're a college football player. You don't have a lot of downtime. But what does Trey Knox do in the little downtime that you get? What do you like to do? When it's warm, I play golf. Oh, okay, and, golf. Yeah, and, and when I'm not golfing, I play video games. All right, what's the video game of choice? Uh, really big on Call of Duty. Okay, I fit, I knew, I had a feeling you were gonna say that. All right. Call of Duty, um, golf. Now, you know some of the other guys on the team claim at least claim to be really good golfers, too. You've heard this? I know one for sure. Kai Kroger is nasty on a golf course. I, I, I have heard, yeah. Well, Kai's good yeah. at everything, though. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, he, I mean it, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Don't don't tell Spencer I said this, but he might give him a run if you put – I mean, guy's got a perfect passer rating, you know what I mean? Man, emergency uh, quarterback. That's the emergency, emergency quarterback, punter. Uh, I've heard the same thing, golfer. You know, Spence does a little golfing. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten um, a, a chance to play with him, but he talks a big game, but we'll see. He does. All right, so you, you consider yourself pretty good then. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I think you're sandbagging a little bit. Yeah, I think I think you sound like you're really good and you just don't want to say it. Nah, I'm, I'm okay, I promise. I'm okay, okay, you're just okay. All right. All right. Uh, favorite foods? Uh, I know not Uncrustables. Yeah, uh, definitely not. Are you still? Can you still drink chocolate milk? Is that yes, still? Yes, I, I love chocolate milk. Me too. I'm with you on that. What um, What else do you like? Definitely chicken. I don't know what it is about chicken, but I can eat chicken <laughs> every day until the day I die. And I think Any it's just because so, because it's so versatile. You can do everything with a piece of chicken, man. I and totally I just, agree. I think I appreciate that. chicken for that reason right there. You but do some. You you cook some chicken up of your own. Oh, yeah, I got a fryer sitting right there on the counter. I mean, I fry the chicken, I bake the chicken. Whatever you want me to do, I could do it with a piece of chicken. <laughs> that sounds, all right, that sounds good. All right, so last football thing for you, Trey, before we let you get out of here. Uh, obviously, spring ball coming up here in, shoot, about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, any goals that you have for yourself, you know, just kind of when you exit spring, you want to look back and say, hey, I feel like I got – this particular thing or these particular things done and, and feel on track? Well, number one, obviously, is staying healthy, man. Uh, mm-hmm. if you get on that field, it, anything can happen. And so staying healthy is always the biggest, the number one thing that you want to accomplish when you come out of spring ball. The number two is just having a better understanding of the offense. I mean, I haven't played in Coach Logan's offense, um, so I don't know what we're going to do, but I know that I need to learn it and that I need to be prepared and that – I need to know it like the back of my hand um, because I need to know both aspects of playing the game, uh, run and pass. So a great understanding of the offense and just keep building chemistry with my teammates um, that they can trust on me to make a play that Spencer knows that I'll be in the right spot at the right time to catch the ball um, that the O-line knows that I got the call and I'm going to block the right guy so that we can increase the run. Uh, just those, those three things is what I'm really focused on. All right, Trey. Hey, I appreciate you taking time, man, as you guys are in the midst of workouts, getting ready for spring. 
Good stuff. Enjoyed our conversation. Uh, again, that's Trey Knox, Gamecock football tight end in this interview brought to you by Garnet Trust. Thanks, everybody, for watching.